Wow. Phones to the top of the table. So, as we were just saying a few minutes ago, last week the question was asked, who was the youngest saint in the church? Jack answered that question a minute ago. What was the answer he gave? The Holy Innocents. Who are they? Sign-in sheets on the last table. Have you heard that term before? No. Hmm. Don't remember that feast? The Feast of the Holy Innocents. Okay. Okay. So, St. Joseph had some dreams, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Have we talked about that before? Yes. You heard that? Okay. What was his first dream? Where an angel appeared to him. What was that one about? He had planned to quietly divorce Mary so that she, you know, he didn't want to publicly uh, write because that would have brought about her. Well, she, yes, she, she, she was. Right, so what was the punishment for that? Death. Okay, so she was, he was going to just quietly step aside and, and, and not publicly. So that was dream one, when the angel said, no, have no fear, take her into the house. This is the child of the Lord. Okay. What was the other dream? What was another dream? Well, what about the family? Oh, the famine. Wrong, wrong, Joseph. Yes, yeah, so he was com Someone was coming to, to do what to them? Kill the baby. Kill the baby. So what does Joseph do? Takes the family to Egypt. So what did the king Herod do? Killed all the babies. What do you think we call those? The holy innocents. The holy innocents. <laughs> the youngest saints of the church. Now, what I'm talking about here is the ones on the official role named, okay? The canonized ones. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. Because the, these the canonized ones are not the only saints. Okay, so I've got a list up here, and these are not all of the younger ones. These are some of them that I picked out. And when you are researching these, if you do research on these, a couple of things: make sure the site you're on is reputable. Okay, cross check it. Make sure it is a good Catholic site. Also, that you're not looking at an Episcopal site or an Orthodox site or Wikipedia. Okay. Right. So, like I said, make sure you're when, when you're researching a saint, make sure you're on a reputable Catholic site. Some of them, and there's a couple I left off of here because in the early days of the church, particularly, we don't know as much about some of the saints. And there was one I found, and we, it, it definitely said they don't know very much about it. They don't even know his age and everything, so I left him off of here, but he's in the same age range. 
Saint Jose Luis Sanchez de Rio. How old do you think he was? Yes. Fourteen is correct. Fourteen. Is he in his teens? Yeah, fourteen. Yeah, let me. He was martyred for his faith. He would not deny his faith. Viva Cristo Rey. No. It went into the 30s, I think, before it finally came to an end. And it was Knights of Columbus that actually pushed the American government to step in and make a deal. And I put EC in front of a couple of these to indicate they're from the early church. The rest of these are all from like the last 150 years. So that may seem a long time ago to you, but in 2,000 years of church history, most of these are recent saints. Okay, their lives were not that long ago. Why were they, uh, why were they killing the uh, Catholics in Mexico? Because they didn't want the church, the power of the church, to bother the power of the government. So the government just decides to get away from the church. I thought religion and kind of like what's going on now. There's a lot of things that take place that are anti-church because the government wants to do their thing, not what the church says. I thought that religion and government weren't supposed to mix up with each other. That's in the U.S. Yeah, and, and that is actually that separation of church and state is really more the other way around. To keep the state from mandating what church is. Forever, the church, we should be the moral voice of society. If the government's doing something that's against the, more, you know, the moral rights, and the church, through its body, the people, are standing up against that, speaking out against it, what's going to happen sometimes? People are going to get hurt. Next case here. Think is it though? Fourteen. But similar situation. Martyr in Uganda. The youngest of those martyred in Uganda. Okay. Saint Agnes of Rome. Ancient church. Early church. Thirteen. If you haven't figured out, I'm counting down. <laughs> if you kind of notice, okay. But you will hear Agnes's name in church and some of the prayers. Another ancient one. Okay, we'll 
We'll talk about this one. Eleven. Okay. Maria Garetti. Yes, I'm counting down in eight. Okay. Maria. Her mother worked on or worked for a rich family. The son of the family kept making advances to Maria. She would not give in to his advances, maintained her purity, kept her purity. This so enraged him that he stabbed her multiple times. On her deathbed, she forgave him with the words, I want him to be with me in heaven. She appeared to him in prison with that plea, asking him, forgiving him, first of all, asking him to change his life so that they, he could be in heaven at the end of his life on earth. When she was canonized, formally recognized as a saint, her mother and her murderer were present at St. Peter's Basilica for her canonization. It's a story of not only the effect she had, I mean, the, the holiness she had while she was here on earth living for those 11 years, but the power of that forgiveness and how it kept working after her death. Okay, these last two should be kind of familiar. They have the, the same last name. They are brother and sister. Eleven and ten. But do you know who Saint Francisco and Saint Jacinta are? They sound familiar. They sound familiar. Their cousin was with them. Where? Not France. No, it was. Not Mexico. Not America. In a place. In a place. In 2017, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of this appearance. What was going on in the world in 1917? World War. World War, World War One. Spanish. Spanish flu is what actually yes was what they both died of the Spanish flu a couple years after the appearance. Okay. Portugal. Portugal, Our Lady of Fatima. These are two of the three children that Our Lady of Fatima appeared to, and Our Lady of Fatima was asking the world to do what? Pray the rosary. Pray the rosary for what? Peace. Peace? That's, well, that, that, yeah, that was one of them, the, the end of the war. There was another one. This, what he's looking for would predate you guys. You weren't born yet. But it has happened just in the last 30 years. Actually, less than 30 Yeah, but what, 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 the, the Cold War. Russia. 
and Germany. Yeah. Russia. Russia and Germany. The conversion. Conversion of Russia. It has happened. No, no, they, they, di they died of the Spanish flu. Yes, they were just, people didn't believe them, right? It, it, right, it, it, I mean, it, didn't they bring people? Like, yes, yeah, yes, over, because Mary appeared multiple times. Isn't it Mary that even had the children hell? That was one of the visions they had, yeah. Well, actually, no, they were younger than that. 10 and 11 is when they died. They were younger than that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, when, when they actually had the visions. Okay. And the other child from Fatima is not on my list here for two reasons. Right, she's not canonized yet. And she didn't die a child. Yeah, she, yeah, she became a nun. She actually only died a few years ago. So, why isn't she canonized? Yeah, why isn't she canonized? Her case is going through the process. You don't just die in the, you know, Vatican declares you a saint. How long did generally. it take before they became saints? Uh, it was a few years. I don't, I don't remember. I mean, like I said, it's a process. Yes. First, first thing, you have to be dead. And generally, before a case can even be open, you have to be dead five years. Okay. Yeah, to become a canonized saint. To be recognized to canonize saints. But here's the church militant. The canonized saints of all the church. What church? We drilled this in you last week. We did. The communion of saints is all of us. The these canonized saints are with the other saints as part of what church? Triumphant. Thank you. Very good. Now, the process, like I said, your case generally, and every once in a while, it will be waived. It can, the, the, the Vatican Pope can waive it. But that's very rare. Yeah. So, then your case 
is put together locally, given to the bishop. The bishop then sends it to the Vatican. The Vatican investigates it. This, this looks at a whole process. If it is felt the case is worthy of further investigation, the saint or the person is then declared a servant of God. Okay. That's saying, okay, from, from the initial investigation, their life is worthy enough for us to continue looking into it. They're now servant of God. From that stage, there has to be a miracle attributed to that saint that occurred after their death. Two first miracle. The, the, yes, the two total. First one, first approved miracle they then move to venerable. Venerable. No, no, yeah. The, yeah, the before, the, the, yes. Servant of God's when their case is opened, if it's deemed, the, their investigation of their life appears that they did live a holy life and everything, they become venerable. First miracle moves them to blessed. Second miracle moves them to canonized saint. So these three down here are just blessed right now. I put this one on the list. Carlo. He died in 2006. Okay. So, although he is older than all of you, he died close to the beginning of your lives. So, he is, like I said, he's still blessed. But look him up. He, he is a more modern example of a saint. Did he die of sickness? Yes, he died of sickness, yes. Yeah, he had leukemia. Yes, and that's a good thing for you to research. Great, now we have a <laughs> no, we won't go into that next week. These two are the youngest I could find. Six and five. Okay, they're just blessed, but Debbie and I were remembering younger ones. <laughs> It's they're, they're, they're blessed. They're still blessed. That, that's the other thing you got to kind of watch when you're researching it, especially the, the ones that are active cases right now, is you may read one article and they're a servant of God. You may find another article and they're venerable. You kind of got to watch your dates when you're kind of researching them. But here's the examples. And a lot of them are, like I said, in, in the more recent history of the church, of people your age or younger that have been recognized as saints by the church. Okay. Yes, yay, reading. Lesson 20, page 185. What would Jesus do? The Beatitudes, yeah. YouTube, and I think if you put in mouse for chasing happiness or something, it okay. shows it. Okay, so let's do the opening prayer. Christopher, phone, table. Okay, so this week we're going to talk about the Beatitudes. Have you heard of the Beatitudes before? Yes. Mr. Jack said something about it. How many are there? Do you know? It's usually seven or twelve. Eight, although some will argue there's a nine and a ten. But we're going to talk eight today. And they come from what famous sermon? Sermon on the Mount. This 
Sermon on the Mount. Okay. So let's say this prayer together. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. When he saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who are in thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they, blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So what are we talking blessed here? What's that word mean to you? What, it, what we're really talking about here, and, and the word, if you go back to the ancient text, it can be translated a couple of ways. But you can also put in the word happiness here. Happy are they who? Happy. But we're not talking the kind of happy you get that Christmas present you've always wanted. Because what usually happens shortly after you get that Christmas present. It's somewhere else. Because you either want something else, you break it. Okay, so we're not talking that level of happiness. That's fleeting happiness. We're talking a deeper happiness. Because what is God's desire for us. True happiness to get to heaven. Happiness, but how about to be with him? Okay, in heaven, but to be with him. He created us out of love to be with him. So that's what we're talking about, the happiness, that level of happiness. What was that, Henry? Well, he tried. What did man do? Okay. Because through free will, Because what did they do? What did what did they bring into the world? Sin. Yeah, but they through their disobedience, they brought the stain of sin, the, the presence of sin into the world. They broke humanity, all of us. They lost the right. Yeah, and they they part of that was you. We lost, they lost access to the tree of life, which means we lost access to the tree of life until what? What happened to restore access to the tree of life? I gotta say, good Lord, we just celebrated Easter. You'd think you'd remember. It's not the crucifixion. It's not. It is the what? To get better fitting dentures and feel the same as 
That's the, the whole plan of salvation. He took on our nature and our sin, took our punishment, and opened through his resurrection access to heaven again. So the crucifix becomes the new tree of life. Okay, sounds like we're close to the video. So why did I pick that? Did you guys like that one? It's a little different than the videos we, we normally have. So I wanted to... I, I saw that one yesterday. And, and thought that it was uh, really appropriate for today. So why did I choose that one? Well, what, 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 why was the mouse chasing happiness? Well, we, we're all made to be happy. God made us to be happy. But there's a difference as to what kind of happiness. Okay? So the mouse was looking for what made him happy. And he tried all kinds of things, did he not? And some of them made him happy for a little while. He looked quite happy driving that little car down the road when he could. Got that TV. And how, you know, I guess, but ha, what was one of, the, one of the things that struck me the most, and I, I've seen this a couple of times now, is what was plastered all over the Happy. background Happy. scenes. Happy, Happy but what, what was with them? Ads. Ads. Logos. Did you recognize, I mean, most of them were, were, were tweaked a little yeah. for copyright reasons. But did you recognize a lot of logos in there? Yeah, Daniel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jack Daniel or, or, or Jim Beam, because it kind of was a... Yeah, so there were a lot of ads in there, and a lot of the things that we think will bring us happiness and pursue it. And, and like I said... Especially the last two weeks, I felt like when he got zapped by that mousetrap, <laughs> I felt like that the last couple of weeks because I've pretty much been chained to my computer working. Yeah, they feel like that at school. Yeah, and you, you, you feel that way too. Yes. No, no, no. Virtual is soft. It's so long. Okay. So this is not the kind of happiness we're talking about today. Not the kind of happiness God meant for us. Okay. He meant a much deeper happiness for us. Not what we were seeing here. Okay. So let's bring these Beatitudes and put them in a little bit of a different language. Something, because you, you kind of read them and they can be a little hard for us to understand or to relate to. So, turn to page 185. I'm going to ask each of you to read me a beatitude. 185. Yes. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask a volunteer by selection to read a beatitude. And then I'm going to flip the page and I will read it in a more understandable language. Okay. You want to go first? Okay. What's the first beatitude? Okay. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay. How about we restate that as don't be obsessed with money and achievement. Can you, can you relate to that a little more than poor in spirit? Okay, that's kind of what it's saying. Next one. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Okay. 
blessed are those who mourn. How about, don't be afraid to let your heart feel sad and to share in the hurts of others. Okay? Does that make it more relatable? Don't be afraid to let your heart feel sadness. Okay? It's one of those, we won't know happiness without knowing sadness. Sadness is part of our lives, part of the world. Also, don't be afraid to be and talk to and help those who are sad. When we talk about being sad and mourning, we often think in terms of somebody died and, gee, we're all sad and blah, blah, blah. It's not limited to that. I had something happen to me years ago. particular beatitude. I had gone out, I had a mechanical pencil, and I had just bought a bunch of lead to fit the pencil. And I went and I sat down in my chair and I picked up the container and one of my children who actually lived to adulthood had spilled the stuff all over and I was mourning, sad, that I had gone and bought this lead. I was all set now. One of these kids, little rock booger, I screwed it up. So as I started to bend over, I noticed that all of the lead wasn't broken. None of it. So this is an example of I was comforted. And that this beatitude just came to my mind. So it's not a case of, oh well, you gotta wait till you get to heaven or whatever. No. You just have to think in terms of what am I doing today? applies to today. And that state of my mind stays my mind even to today. That's why I'm just here. Not the strong leg. I just know none of it was broken. And I was uh even on the temple. Next one. Blessed are the meek. How about don't be too quick to take credit for the things you do well or let it bother you when others don't recognize your contributions. Okay. And what this is talking about the sin of pride. Pride. Yeah, don't be too quick to take credit. Don't worry about others not recognizing the things you're doing. Okay. Don't let those things bother you. Okay, so we just did our meek. What's our next one? Okay, those hungering for thirst and righteousness. Stay focused on God until you feel an unquenchable hunger. Okay. Get our focus in the right place. Focus on God, and, and I like this part, until you feel it as an unquenchable hunger. That, that is what we're pursuing. That's what we want, what we should be focused on. God. Yeah, I gotta say, the mouse would have been a little. His life would have been a little different. The next one. Blessed are the merciful. Keep your heart clean, even if it means not going to popular movies or parties, or paying attention to a lot of the ads you see around you, <laughs> and believing in them. Strive to keep your heart clean. Okay, we'll go across the aisle. First one on the second column. Okay. 
for? Okay, the peacemakers. When people offend you or hurt you, forgive them right away. Don't hold on to grudges. Have you met my sister? Yeah. Yes, I have. Uh, yeah, that one is, okay. nice is forgiveness always easy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who have we talked about today, though, is a good saint to pray for to when we're struggling with forgiveness. Well, yeah, but which one is she? Maria. She's on form. That movie's on Maria form. Garetti. Okay. Yeah. So when you're struggling to forgive someone, you have a great saint to pray to who's close to your age. Who's close to your age, okay? I forgive you, but you can forgive me. Okay. Next one. We're on we're on the the second one on the second column. Okay. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Go out of your way to help others know God, even when it feels awkward or in inconvenient. Okay? Evangelizing is not always easy. Talking about our faith is not always easy. Living our faith outside the walls of this building is not always easy. It's easier when you're in building with a group of people who think the same way you do. But it's not always easy when we leave here. So, go out of your way to help others know God even when it feels awkward and inconvenient. Henry, do the last one for me, please. When they insult you and persecute you. So, if people make fun of you for doing all the right things, well, smile and be happy because that's a sure thing that things are going well. That can be a sign that you're living the life you're meant to live. And I know that sometimes it's kind of, and all this is not what society is teaching us. Does society teach us these things? enforce these things no it's enforcing the opposite of these it's forcing uh, it, it's reinforcing what our poor little friend the mouse had to do what he went through so when they and when people are making fun of you and stuff remember that may be a sign that think you're doing the right things things are going the right way it doesn't make it always easy to go through what you're going through it doesn't make it easy but take some comfort from the fact that okay you're doing the right thing you're trying to live your best life and that's what god desires from us for us is for us to live our best life So that eventually we will be with him in heaven and know true happiness, deep and everlasting happiness. Not our little temporal happiness we tend to pursue here. Thank you.
nutrients, all these things help sustain the life that we see around us. And that's what grace is for us. Grace helps sustain us on our journey towards heaven. And we've been talking a lot about grace and how we can receive that grace. But we need to take it a step further. We need to let the grace flow through us so we can bring Christ to others. Today we're going to talk about how Jesus left us very clear and concise directions, the Beatitudes, to help that grace flow through us so that we can become great. We can have, achieve happiness and become the men and women that God has called us to be. you think if you were sitting at your graduation and the speaker came out and gave you these eight steps to happiness that you just read be quick to share in the suffering of others but don't be quick to take credit for things be the one that says uh let's not go to that movie it's a little crude forgive others even when they don't deserve it and when people may laugh at you for doing these things smile and be happy anyway not exactly the what you want to hear on your big happy day, right? But that's exactly what happened when a big crowd gathered and waited to hear what Jesus had to say. He outlined eight ways that we should live in order to truly be happy. These eight points, which we call the Beatitudes, are the opposite of what the world tells us will bring us happiness. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. In other words, blessed are you when you're not addicted to stuff. How do you know you're addicted to stuff? Whenever you start saying, oh, I can't live without my phone, without my music, without my clothes, whatever, you fill in the blank, then we're addicted to that stuff. Blessed are those who mourn. Now this doesn't sound like a formula for happiness, but what is Jesus really saying here? Blessed are you when you're not addicted to good feelings. When the thing that you desire most is feeling good, then you open yourself to all kinds of addictions, such as drugs, alcohol, or impurity. But when we understand that we can offer up our sufferings, when we mourn with and comfort others, then we're united to Christ, both in his suffering, but also in his redemption. Blessed are the meek. Being meek does not mean being a wimp or a pushover. A better word would be gentle. Gentleness is the loving exercise of strength, and only a truly strong person can be gentle. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What is righteousness anyway? It's doing God's will. When we hunger and thirst for what God wants, he promises that we'll have peace and we'll be filled. Christ is also reminding us to be passionate in our thoughts and in our deeds and not lukewarm. He calls us to hunger and thirst implying a strong and vibrant conviction and living out of our faith. Blessed are the clean of heart. Nothing helps us see God more clearly or understand what he wants than a clean heart. A clean heart is one that is free from sin and a heart that practices chastity. When we sin, we become blind. Blessed are the merciful. In this beatitude, Jesus invites us to forgive others and not dwell on how much it hurts. We are called to love those who do not love us. In this way, we become channels of mercy to those we forgive. And by forgiving them, we show them a little bit of the heart of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. There are two kinds of peace, peace of mind and peace of heart. Peace of mind comes from knowing the truth and peace of heart comes from doing God's will. Now the world may tell you that peace of heart comes from doing whatever you want. It's a big lie. So how do you become a peacemaker? A peacemaker is someone that helps others get peace of mind by teaching them the truth, and peace of heart by helping them understand what is God's will. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Courage is a virtue that's really lacking in this world. This beatitude invites us to have courage for standing up for the truth. It is an invitation to heroic virtue. 
So now we have a complete list. Blessed are the poor, the meek, the hungry, the pure. Blessed are those who mourn, who are merciful, who are persecuted, who are peacemakers. This may not sound like a formula for happiness, but today we're going to look at some of the Beatitudes in action, and you can decide if they work. Okay, our questions. Which of these is not one of the Beatitudes? Blessed are the poor in spirit, the merciful, the weak, or the clean of heart? The weak. C. C. Weak. C. C, the weak. The Beatitude, blessed are those who are persecuted, reminds us of the need to have Courage. courage. So what does being holy have to do with being happy? So you say holiness is true happiness? Is that what you're saying? Okay. What, 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 well, how? Why, why, how are they correlated? Why are they correlated? Because if we're holy, we're living by what? God's will? And by living God's will, we'll have what in our lives? Well, besides happiness. Sense of peace? I know in my own life, e even though w when I've had difficult decisions or tried to figure out what God wants me to do in a situation, one of the ways I know I've made the right choice is a feeling of a sense of peace about it. Doesn't mean that it's easy, that the choice is easy. Doesn't mean that there's not work involved or sometimes a lot of work involved with it. But there'll be a peace about it. That's God's grace that I'm doing his will. Jesus wants us to be joyful. He teaches us how to live so that we might have joy and that our joy would be complete. In the Sermon on the Mount, he gives us a detailed guide to the happy life. The very first words out of his mouth are, happy or blessed are those who are poor. Beatitude comes from a Latin word that means a true and lasting happiness. Not a superficial and passing version of happiness, but something that goes much deeper than that. Let's see what it looks like when these Beatitudes are lived out in the world. CFRs uh, were founded as a uh, renewal community uh, to live the, the, the Capuchin Franciscan charism in the modern context. So our style is to become one with the, the, the community, if you will, and become enter into sort of a familial or fraternal relationship with the poorest of the poor. So we always uh, live in poor neighborhoods uh, to find Christ uh, in the poor, to bring Christ to the poor. The Brotherhood um, 
is, is a brotherhood which encourages men to step up out of the isolation, out of the woundedness, perhaps wounds that span 30, 40 years in their life. The wounds that have really um, left them vulnerable to, to the lies of the world, really. You know, and the lies being self-medication or drugs and alcohol or, or, or uh, materialism or anger or, or uh, loneliness, things like this. But those are all the, the lies of the world that um, a lot of the men have fallen, fallen prey to or have embraced. Here, they learn the truth. You know, the truth that they are sons of God, that they, they are their heirs to a great treasure, the treasure of mercy, the treasure of love, the treasure of dignity, and the treasure that they can have control. Uh, God was control their own life back in their hands, that the control of their life isn't in, the, in, in drugs, isn't in being a slave to something that God is doing for you. And uh, they learn that here. Every time we open the door every night at 6.30, uh, 35, 30, 35 men come in, and each of them brings something totally unplanned, right? And um, we have to be ready to be available. And, and through the prayerful and contemplative attitudes of the friars and volunteers, we're able to really read the need in the moment and be present to the men. And, and like I said, try to be the person that they need us to be to help them and support them and, and encourage them to grow in the Lord, whether it's a little bit or a lot. So, we have a Bible study, we have compulsory Mass on Sunday, everyone goes to Mass, no matter what, if you're Muslim, Jew, it doesn't matter, atheist, everyone goes to Mass. Um, and the Bible study is a spiritual reflection, it's often scripturally based, uh, it often seeks to teach education of, this, of this, this, the, the, the faith in general, different ways, moral issues. So we have a daily holy hour, by God's grace, daily Mass, of course, we pray five offices together, we have almost four and a half or five hours of prayer together two hours of meditation. And then from there, we go forth unified to witness to the gospel with the joy and the unity that we have together that's given through the fraternal life and prayer life. When people see our works, that's our most visible part, the most visible side of our life. Um, uh, but what they're really looking at, hopefully, is the presence of God and the joy and the peace and, like I said, the unity among us that shines through that apostolate. See this here? That's a street sign upside down, but it was hit by a straight bullet. You can imagine how powerful that, that, that gun was to bend like that like that. But it was far enough away where it didn't penetrate. So, God forbid there was someone ahead. This one's been in a lot of movies. This poor guy, Reese, I guess he died in 91, and uh, he's 20 years old. So, and when the friars walk by, we just pray for him. These are great reminders for us to pray for the people who've been murdered before their time, you know. In a certain way, we have the blessing of, you might say at times, mourning with these men. But the blessing that comes is, blessed are those who mourn, they will be consoled. In Greek, they will be parakleted. This is a great way to understand that beatitude. Not just, you know, have a, a nice birthday cake, but they will be parakleted. Blessed are those who mourn. They'll have the Holy Spirit come upon them in a deeper way. Hollywood gets us to live a fantasy, you know. How, uh, the media makes us live in a fantasy, our, 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 our pride and our ego. Um, we, we create fantasy worlds for ourselves, and, and we don't live in the truth. And, and they say, well, to find consolation or, or redemption is, is to just ignore the world and, and enter into this fantasy life, either from an ego, narcissism, or from drugs, or drinking, or partying, or materialism. But no, God says, I am here in reality. I'm in the midst of the suffering and the mourning. I'm in the midst of, of um, your human condition, your day-to-day -day life. And blessed are you, you know, when you are fully human, when, when you shed these fantasies and these lies. Blessed are you, because then you will find me where you are, right here, right today and now. Blessed are you. Be consoled. The Lord is there.
lights. Okay, the word beatitude means true and lasting happiness. Okay, so also remember, because these are the two of the words to know at the back of the chapter. Beatitude, true and lasting happiness. The beatitudes, the teaching of Christ. The eight the attitude that he gave us from the Sermon on the Mount. The Franciscan friars live out the Beatitudes by Yeah. Because they talked about they feed the poor. Okay. They shelter the homeless. And they preach the gospel because what is one of the requirements of those that come to seek their aid? Doesn't matter what religious background they have, what's one of the requirements they have for them? Okay. You got to go to Mass. They pray the offices. Jack talked about those. Three weeks ago? The prayers. Okay, so we've talked about some of the things we can pursue for temporal happiness. What are some things that are important in life that we do not pay enough attention to? Bible. Okay. Okay. Praising, going to Mass. Do we pay enough attention to our relationships with others? Sometimes? Our relationship with our sister? I do pay attention. Noticing what's going on around us. Looking for Christ in others. We talked a couple of weeks ago about St. Teresa of Calcutta. One of the things she did was bring human dignity to those that were dying in the streets. She looked for and saw and found Christ in those she met. Well, we don't do that enough. Let's see if we can get these last ones without watching the video. The happiness we experience in heaven is called the Blank vision when we see God face to face. What's it called when we see God face to face? Trinitarian. C, beatific. C, beatific. Trinitarian is seeing all three. Trinitarian is our belief is three in one. Okay, It's our belief of a God who is three in one. Celebrated the feast a few months ago, or a few weeks ago. The apostles go up the mountain with Jesus. Oh. Peter, James, and John go up the mountain with Jesus. What happened at the top of the mountain? 
No, that was down in the garden. This was before that. Wasn't talking to God. He was talking to Mo Moses and, and someone else. Elijah. Joseph. Elijah. Prophet. So, Elijah, the great prophet, Moses, the keeper of the law, who received the law, so Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophecies. Jesus, what, what happened to Jesus while he was up there? He was talking to those two. What happened to him while he was up there? What did, what did Peter, James, and John see besides Elijah and Moses? Jesus' appearance, appearance changed. They saw him glorified. Okay, and I expect you all to get this last one and not just guess because we have went over these. Which one of those is not one of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in Isaiah? C. 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 Intelligence. Whew, I was getting a little worried there. <laughs> Okay, we'll do our closing prayer, then we'll go outside for a little exercise before we finish, okay? No, no, we have a beatitude game. But I'll give you something to look forward to. In a couple of weeks, we may go out and play Mass Murderer. So. Also known as COVID. Okay. I'm on page 191. Oh, no. We're going to do this. I'm going I'm to do the closing prayer. This is the passage just after the sermon, or just after the Beatitudes. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do man light a lamp and put it under a bushel 
are on a, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Lord Jesus, when we humble ourselves and follow you, your light shines through us and out into a dark world. Help us to be poor in spirit and meek, to mourn, to hunger and thirst for justice, to be merciful, pure of heart, and peacemakers, and to be willing to suffer for what is right. Make us heroes, Lord, by blessing us with a radical faith and willing hearts. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Radical faith, not lukewarm. Now, I will also say, I don't have it. Did any of you pick up these little white books upstairs? They're a little daily meditation on the season of Easter. I actually have found there's several good things about the Beatitudes in there. Okay, let's go out to the grass for just a quick little exercise. We've talked about what we really want is happiness. Our hearts long for this because they were made to be happy, eternally happy. This happiness is ultimately fulfilled by the beatific vision. That is, when we see God face to face. This kind of deep, eternal happiness is kind of hard to imagine, but let's try. If you look at a sunset or listen to an incredible piece of music, your heart could be lifted even if just for a moment, to a kind of ecstasy. But we can't keep looking at the same sunset without getting tired of it. And listening to the same piece of music over and over could make you go crazy. The beauty that we enjoy in the sunset and in the music is a beauty that God himself created, and that's what we're responding to. But because God himself created it, it's only a shadow or a reflection of the all-surpassing beauty that is God himself. And if we rejoice in the sunset, we will rejoice infinitely more in God, who is the author and source of all beauty. And even if we get tired of listening to the same piece of music over and over, it will be impossible to get tired of God, who is infinite beauty, the ultimate author, composer, painter, you name it. Remember that whatever joy, beauty, and even ecstasy that we experience on earth, is but a glimpse of what awaits us in heaven. The saints have given us glimpses of what we can expect in heaven. Saint John Bosco often had dreams where God spoke to him, and once he dreamed he was in a most beautiful place. In the dream, he stood on a hill, which overlooked a huge lake, as blue as the sea in perfect calm. But what he was looking at was not water, it was like sparkling crystal. He heard music that sounded like a hundred thousand instruments playing, each with its own sound, and it made the air come alive. He heard people singing, and their faces were so happy, and they took as much pleasure from singing as from hearing each other sing. Am I in heaven? St. John Bosco asked. No, came the reply. This is but a glimpse of the joy that awaits you in heaven. Remember that no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has ready for those who love him. When I hear that story, it makes me excited, but it also makes me wonder, am I ready for heaven? Life on earth is really a preparation for life in heaven. The way we live now not only opens the door to heaven, but also helps us to start living the happiness of heaven here on earth. Remember that holiness, blessedness, is another way of thinking of happiness. Jesus wants all of us to live the abundant life. He said, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. Why wait until tomorrow? Living the Beatitudes is made possible by the Holy Spirit living in us. In confirmation, we receive a special outpouring of these gifts to help us live this life. Life can be tough, and there are a million ways that we can get distracted or off track, and we need help. God didn't leave us alone or unprepared. Remember the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Wisdom, understanding, 
counsel, knowledge, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. They're right there within you, ready to help you to take up the challenge and walk the narrow road. Most people don't connect happiness and passion to holiness, but those with experience know that people that live a holy life not only live life on a deeper level, but live life to the max. Jesus came to give us a life overflowing with fullness. He came to help us be our real selves. So if you want to be happy, be holy. Holiness is beautiful, it's attractive, it's powerful, and it is what we were made for.